Now here's the deal. What we've done right now is we have the slope, sure, but is it the slope of a tangent or the slope of a secant? Okay, secant, yes, secant. We have the slope between these two actual fixed points right now, yes? What, what we want to do is just what we did like the first couple days of, of this calculus course, not the review, but the calculus part of this. We want to let point Q get really close to point P, and I've, I've said it before in here, but how are we going to do that? We can't change x of zero, that's fixed, okay? What are we going to do to let this get close to that? What happens? Does h get bigger? Does h get smaller? How much smaller? Infinitely smaller. So infinitely close to, in other words, that means let h approach zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to make, so this is a secant right now. In order to get the tangent, we're going to make point Q get close to point P. Make Q get really close to point B, point P. How, you might ask? Well, we're going to take that h, we're going to make it close to zero. That says the distance between them is very, very, very small. Well, tell me something. I can't just say, oh yeah, I'm going to make h zero. I have to introduce something that we've had in this class before. What allows you to take a value, a variable, and move it close to a number? What was that? Okay. It's called the limit. So here's how we make the jump from a secant, which is what this is. That's just the slope of, you could do this with, with any line. It's going to find the slope for any point. That's what it is. If you know the distance of points, that's what that is saying. Okay, that is the slope formula. It's just a different way to write it. How we make the, the jump from this secant to the tangent that I'm going to write over here is we're going to let h approach zero. That involves the limit. That's why we had to have limits. So this one's the secant. We want the slope of the tangent line. The slope of the tangent line is going to look almost identical. It's going to have the f of x sub 0 plus h minus f of x sub 0 all over h. Only now, what do we want the h to do? So we need a limit as a first step. I could have just given you that, right, and said that's the slope of tangent line. But do you see what's happening here? Do you see how this, this is the slope of any two points that, that I want? Okay, this is the slope, and this is the distance between those two points. And what this says is I'm making that distance get really close to zero. Can it ever equal zero? No. In fact, if you plug in zero, what happens? You get something undefined. Why, why does that happen? It says, well, if you only have one point, i.e. you let it go to zero and get there, you only have one point, right? Can you find the slope of one point? That doesn't make any sense. So you can't let it get to zero. That's why we had to use the limit and say we're approaching zero, where the, the distance between those numbers doesn't make that much of a significant difference, but there is a small, small difference. That's why we had to have that limit idea. Would you like to see an example about how to actually use this? For sure. I would hope so. It's kind of interesting, right? We just kind of proved that you can find a slope of a curve at a point. Isn't that? That's kind of neat. I know we've done it one time before, but it took a whole lot of work. Now we're going to minimize our work, I hope. <laughs> so let's try this. We've done this example. We did it the long way. Now we're going to have a nice, easier way to do this. So find the equation. I'm sorry, of the tangent line.
to y equals x squared at the point. Right now, I'm going to give you an actual point. That's how I've defined our function. x sub 0 is the actual value. It's a fixed point of x. Okay? It says you have an x value of this number. In the future, I'm not going to give you that. We're going to be able to find the slope at any point, and that's even more cool, even more cooler at 1, 1. But the first thing we got to do, we got to figure out what all this stuff is. And where you start is you've got to define your function. So in our case, what is f of x? What are we going to treat as f of x? x squared. Good. That's important for you to know that because we're going to be referring back to x squared a lot right now. Also, you need to identify what is x sub 0 for this specific case. In our case, what is the x coordinate, that's our x, of the fixed point? So x sub 0 in our case is 1. It says you're starting at the point 1. Are you guys all right with that? Not because this is the 1. That would be the output. That would be f of x sub 0. Or that, that, that's what we do when we plug in 1. But the x sub 0 is 1. That's the x coordinate of our fixed point. You okay with this so far? Now I'm going to encourage you to do a couple things before you just blindly plug this stuff in. I want you to find the f of x sub 0 plus h and the f of x sub 0 independently. So in our case, we want to find f of x sub 0 plus h. Tell me, what was x sub 0 again? One. So we want to find x sub 0 plus h, but x sub 0 is 1. I want to find f of what? 1 plus h. 1 plus h. Make the jump from x sub 0 what your, your value actually is for x sub 0. Do you follow that one? So this is 1 plus h. Give me a head nod if you see where the 1 is coming from. Good. All right. Also, we want f of x sub 0. f of x sub 0 is really f of what? Very good. So, short little recap. We identify our function, we identify the point, those two things are there. This right here is your formula to find the slope of a tangent line, that's it. All you've got to be able to do, h is not going to change. You just need to find this thing and this thing accurately, plug it in and find your limit. This is going to incorporate a lot of things we've done in this class already. So f of x sub 0 plus h, that is f of 1 plus h. f of x sub 0, that is f of 1, because x sub 0 is 1. You with me? Let's start on the easy part. What's f of 1 say to do? Plug in 1. Yeah, plug in 1. Where are we going to plug in 1? Yeah, so plug in 1. How much is that going to give you? 1 squared is 1. Sure. In fact, it should give it to you right here, right? Because that is the output. I mean, it should give it to you. If it gives you the whole point, that's even easier. If it says as at x equals a number, well then yes, you actually have to plug it in on your own. Now how about f of 1 plus h? What do you do with that? Turn it into a polynomial. Turn it into, what do you mean? Plug it into f of x. You know what this meant? This meant plug in 1, right? You know what this means? Plug in 1 plus h. I always told my students, I said, look it, this thing is non-separable. You can't do this. Well, please watch the board. Common mistake all the time when you first learn this, especially compositions, if you struggle with that. People go, okay, this is f. Okay, I want f of x. I want to do 1 plus h, so they'll give me this. Uh, let's do 1 squared plus h, because that's f of 1 plus h. Do you see the mistake? Mm -hmm. This isn't 1, f of 1 plus h. That'd be written like this. That's what that would be. That is that. Okay? This isn't f of 1 plus h. It's f of 1 plus h. Okay? You can't separate it. It's like one thing for you. Right? Whatever I have in there, that's what you're plugging in. You don't do f of 1 plus h. You do f of 1 plus h. Like it's one word. You, do you get it? You cannot separate it. So in our case, we're not doing 1 plus h. No, 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 no. no. We're doing f of 1 plus h. So what's that going to be? 1 plus h, <laughs> 1 plus h squared. Do you see how to get from here to here? Are you sure? 
Not f of 1 plus, oh, please, please don't do that. It's never going to work for you if you do that. Never. Oh my gosh, that would be horrible. Well, now all we've got to do is take these quantities that you just figured out, <clears throat> substitute them into my formula for my slope of the tangent line, and we'll be done. More or less. <laughs> Except more or less, it's scary. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's less. It's stuff you've already done. Very easy. So instead of x sub zero, f of x sub zero plus h, I've already figured that out. That was one plus h squared. That's what I'm going to put first. Minus, instead of f of x sub zero, what did I work that out to? That's why I have you do it off the side, right? You just break it down piece by piece. That's okay. f of one plus h was one plus h squared. f of one is one. All over how much? Oh, don't forget that h. Don't forget that h. Okay, and now here's where you try to plug in the number, because this is a limit now, right? This is just a limit, which we've already conquered those sections. You plug in zero. Can you plug in zero? You get, oh, zero over zero, right? That's a problem, don't you? Or you get something over zero. It looks like zero over zero to me. So, oh, we need to do something else then. Why don't we figure out what this is? So let's go ahead and distribute that. Combine some like terms and see what happens. Don't forget to write the limit. Let's see, that's 1 plus 2h plus h squared minus 1 over h. Did you get the same thing when you distributed as well? What happens here? The ones, the ones are gone. Okay, I like that. That's great. So that is the limit as h goes to 0 of 2h plus h squared over h. Oh man, if I plug in 0 right now, it's still going to 0 over 0. Uh, what's another thing that I might be able to do? Do you remember when we, whenever we had a 0 over 0, typically what you do is you factor, right? And, and that sometimes, most of the time, will we'll work your problem out for you. That's what we're doing here. Now, is it a problem for our domain that we'll be crossing out a 0 over 0? Are we actually letting h get to zero? Just approach zero, so it's fine. We can do that. And this is your process for finding the slope of curve to point. What you ultimately want to do, you want to cross out this h. That's your. That's pretty much your goal. That's it. As soon as you get rid of that, you'll be fine. Plug in the number. So here we have h two plus h over h. Are you okay on the factorization? Can we cross our H's out? Mm -hmm. Notice how we don't need to get rid of all our H's, right? Just the one that's causing us the problem. Just that one. Notice how I'm still writing the limit. Anytime you have an H, you're going to write the limit. Now, am I okay to evaluate this limit as H goes to zero? Yeah. Now we're fine. We have no issues. Now you stop writing the limit. You write 2 plus 0. <coughs> 2 plus 0 is, of course, 2. two. two. 